Hi, welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie. I've got these lights. Uh, they are LED studio lights that I use whilst recording these videos. One of them has suddenly stopped working. I could replace it, it'd be about £100. As well as the money, it's quite a lot of e-waste just to throw in the dustbin or in the wee recycling bucket. I'm going to see if I can find the fault and see if it's repairable um, because then everyone wins. How hard could it be? So my first stage of fault finding, I'm just going to have a look at it. Is there anything obvious that might have happened to it? No, it's not. It still pretty much looks as it came out of the packet. There's no signs it's had an impact or a bump or has been damaged in any way. My next stage would be um, to see if it's something obvious. So it has a power brick. Now, when I plug this in and switch it to the adapter, there should be a power LED that comes on to show it's having power, whether or not the actual output's turned on and that LED is off. The common thing would just be to jump and look, start opening it up and look. But first I'm gonna just check that the power supply is working. Now one way would be to get a multimeter and to check the voltages. But the quickest way is I've got another one of these lights that is identical. My first thing is to plug this power supply into that. Switch it to the adapter and that little green LED has come on and actually the whole light is on. Ta-da! I'm happy with the power supply, that's all working. Now, there was no physical damage, so my next stage is I'm going to have to get inside here. The best thing is, looking at it, they are all screws, which makes life much simpler. Nothing obvious on here, so I'm going to have a look at this circuit and work out what's happening where and just make myself a little diagram. So I can see that there's almost two identical circuits in here. Now that's because these lights have a control for sort of the tone. Uh, so that makes sense why there's sort of two identical circuits inside. I'm going to guess that half of it goes to white and half of it goes to yellow. But let's see what the rest of the circuit's looking like. I've taken the control board out and I've disconnected the things that were hardwired, the output to the LEDs and the switch connections. Um, and I've just attached some sort of test wires uh, just so it's a bit easier on my desk and I can connect in and measure. I'm just gonna put some WAGO connectors on just to insulate the ends. So that's just providing a layer of insulation that I can easily remove as and when I want it. I'm gonna power it with my power supply here. So I'm just gonna turn that on. I've got 12 volts and I've set a current limit uh, just so I can check it's as the first test that it's not got a short on the input side that's just gonna pull all the power. Reassuringly, it's drawing nothing noticeable we can start having a look and see what is working and what isn't working on the board. Thankfully, a lot of these pads are clearly marked. So I've got my input voltage from the power supply, so that's 12 volts. Now, the first thing that was obviously not working is the LED. I'm trying to see where that comes from. It's quite hard to see the traces on this PCB. I've had a look at all the sections. This part here, is identical to this part here. So I think that's my two LED drivers. The main differences are I've got this U4 here and this U3 section here. Now, handily, I can see exactly what's written on the top of these two. 
This one is a microcontroller. The difficult thing is that if that's gone, I'm not going to know the code that was on here. But this section is a five volt regulator. So that's a possible culprit. If that wasn't converting the 12 volts into 5 volts then the microcontroller wouldn't work which probably wouldn't be controlling the light output. I'm going to put my ground in there and I'm just going to turn it over first and check. There's 12 volts going to the power to both colours of LEDs. That's good, I mean that was quite likely. And then this side would be controlled. So there's a voltage there. Now I would imagine that voltage should change if you moved this, but it doesn't. So there's no control of the light output, which is annoying. So like I said earlier, it's either that microcontroller or the power. Now the easiest thing to check is the power because that power will be going to the microcontroller. I'm going to have a look at the data sheet for that. Uh, it's a 10 milliamp tiny power LDO and the output should be ground on pin 1, V in on pin 2 and V out on pin 3. So ground is ground. V in, I've got the 12 volts I'm expecting and V out has nothing. That's my culprit. I'm thinking it's likely to be that chip. Now I've got suspicion of what it is, I can order that part. But just before I do that, I'm going to check there's nothing further that could be the culprit. So I'm going to remove that. I've got a packet of uh, so through hole 5 volt regulators. I'm going to just put on a bit of breadboard and I can sort of tack solder that circuit into that gap and just check if it works with that. When I power on the power supply, the LED indicator is still not going on and it's drawing quite a lot of current for the fact there's no LEDs on to illuminate. It's at one and a half amps, so there's still something not quite right here. Let's take another look. We've removed that five volt regulator, um, so that was obviously not working at all putting this alternative one on um, that was then providing five volts to the five volt rail but it was pulling too much current from the power supply so there's obviously a, another short further on on the circuit that made the five volt regulator go uh, because it was drawing too much current through it so now we need to find that fault and then we can hopefully repair that and replace the regulator. On a resistance mode I can see that the voltage in and the voltage out of the regulator are shorted. That confirms the thought that there is a short somewhere further in the circuit. So looking at what it could be Potentially one of the ceramic capacitors has gone. I'm going to have a look and see if there's anything obviously gone. So I think I might just start taking off some of these components um, and just seeing if I can figure out which one's gone. As you've just seen, I've been removing the ceramic capacitors one at a time and trying to inject the five volts in to see if it will still current limit. Um, I've had the current limit set on what the current uh, that was able to be supplied by that low voltage regulator was. Um, but every one that I thought was likely um, has still current limited. So the short is still somewhere. It's not a capacitor where it's unlikely to be a capacitor 
that has failed and shorted. Now I've got to start thinking about other things it could be. I can't see any damage to the PCB so I don't think it's a uh, like physical short on the PCB. With this um, multimeter another way of fault finding would be to put it on resistance mode and I should be able to see the resistance between the 5 volt and ground. So actually on a ground pad I've got a resistance of sort of 0 0.2, that seems likely. And on the 5 volt, I've got a resistance of 3. So we know that they are connected together somewhere in this circuit, and they shouldn't be. So that little ceramic capacitor next to it is 2.9, uh, and I mean the other side is ground, so it's going to be that 0 0.2. So now we can go along and see, so still 2.9 there, figure out which side of certain components, 3, 3.1, 3.5, so that's not actually on the 5 volt rail, that must be the ground side of this decoupling capacitor, what I think would be the decoupling capacitor for the microcontroller is 2 ohms, other places where I'm testing on that 5 volt rail, I'm at 3 ohms, so that's quite a drop, 30%. We've already moved that, so we know that's not the fault. Makes me suspicious that it might be that microcontroller. I've removed the microcontroller. Now, the really disappointing thing about finding this fault is I sort of got all excited having found the problem. I looked up that microcontroller, I can buy a new one. It's a matter of pence to buy a new one and pop it on there. But then I realized I can't power up the microcontroller because it's got an internal short. Assuming the code wasn't right protected, I could have tried to download it to put it on a new chip. But even if it wasn't right protected, I can't do that because I can't power it up to get the code off, which is, <laughs> really really frustrating it's really good to find a fault and be able to fix it um, but this shows that sometimes you can find the fault and you can't fix it uh, and that's the way things go however i could do a completely fresh project for either writing the code to put on a blank microcontroller on this pcb or i I've got all the hardware for the light, I've got the actual metalwork and the LED array, um, that's all working fine uh, and that's quite a complicated thing to make mechanically um, in a home workshop. I could just design my own LED driver board, head over to the Element 14 community and let me know what you think. So. How hard can it be? Quite easy to find, quite hard to fix in this instance. So that's all for now. I'll see you next time. Bye.